So Leon, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. First things first, we've obviously heard the news. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so um, obviously I've been advised by the cardiologist and professor to obviously stop playing football kind of with immediate effect. Um, so obviously no competitive uh, football. So it's a bit uh, not soul destroying, but it's a bit disappointing. Obviously I thought I could play a little bit, a little bit longer than obviously 32, which is I turned 33 kind of like next Friday. So um, I thought I'd probably at least play till like 35. That was the idea, but it's been cut short. Um, quite luckily, really, um, it could have been fatal, which, which is worst case scenario. But um, obviously I've got family and kids, so I probably have to listen to their advice, which was, which was a bit hard to take, but it's probably rea reality for me at the moment. You touched on it there. You must be glad it's been detected early. That's yeah. the positive you can take from it. Yeah, so I spoke to kind of like the manager, chairman, uh, players, um, and they've obviously advised me there's a lot, lot left in the tank in terms of obviously living your life, spending time with the family, coaching, and just being around the place. So I'll definitely take that on board. I'm a positive person anyway. So um, no, I look forward to the next next career path. That's, that's going to be obviously on the agenda. But um, yeah, just I think at the time it was hard to take, but I just got to move on. I think it's fair to say you've had a, a brilliant career to date. Looking back, does anything stand out in particular as, as a top achievement? Uh, not, not, not one thing. No, there's, there's been a few things, but um, you know, just just the day-to-day -day kind of um, business, really. Obviously, I've played against great players, played at some lovely stadiums, been in lovely places, um, played under some great managers, played against some great you know, players and managers, um, and obviously with the squad in at Northampton here. I've met some great people, not including you, but there's some... Uh, <laughs> Can we edit that bit out? <laughs> <laughs> obviously looking at your shoes oh, as well. Come on, come so, um, on. Nah, obviously I've had a great time. Um, every club that I've been to, every day that you know I've, I've enjoyed, um, I wouldn't change any of it really. Um, but yeah, I, I look forward to the next part. So. Right, so let's take it back to the beginning. I saw a line on the internet saying, at the age of 13, Leon played as a quick right winger and was a prolific goal scorer, netting over 40 goals using his incredible pace. How did you go from that to a Premier League defender? <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't actually want to. Uh, I didn't actually want to be a defender. I think it was um, at Luton when I was kind of probably about 15. I think they, they said, "Oh, you know, one of the centre halves is injured. Can you fill in?" I think it was against Wickham. Um, I said, "Oh, you know, I might as well." I think there must have been only like 20 minutes left of the game. Um, and I done. I thought I done. Fairly okay, and then the, the managers come over to me and say, "Oh, Leon, you was outstanding at centre half." So I thought, you "Never normally say I'm outstanding when I'm playing right wing. Why are you saying I'm outstanding when I'm playing kind of centre half?" So um, yeah, one thing led to another, and ended up playing centre half for the rest of my career. So. And you were picked up by Luton Town, I think it was 2002. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. How were you spotted originally by them? Um, well, it was tough really. I didn't really start kind of playing football in a football team. I was like 13, so um, I remember just I remember there was a fitness coach that played for my local team, uh, not played for, but coached for my local team, um, and he also coached for Luton Town. And he just said, "Listen, I spoke to um, representatives at Luton Town. Um, do you want to come down and have a train?" I thought, "Why not? Like, what's the worst they can say?" So I went down, and they obviously. I had a look at me over like six weeks, um, and at the end of it, they just said, uh, oh, Leon, you know, you're okay, you're not too bad, um, you're about the average level. They weren't really giving me much praise at the time, and they just said, listen, if you want to stay for another year, then, then we'd like to have you. If not, then we have to, well, you can go. Um, at, at that time, I weren't really too sure whether they wanted me or not, so I so obviously spoke to my parents and spoke to the coaches, a few friends. They said, obviously, you might have said, you've not really got much to lose, so why don't you just go for it? Ended up going for it, ended up you know, progressing into the first team, um, played for the under 21s and stuff, and then made my debut, scored on like, the first game of the season, and it kind of just snowfall, really. Just um, had a lot of confidence, um, I'm not <clears throat> a lot of knowledge passed down from the older players, and then one thing led to another, ended up just doing well. And, Moving on, really. Yeah, you moved on to West Brom, two point yeah. five million pounds at the time. Yeah. What, what was it like moving for that sort of money? Yeah, re <coughs> the price tag really didn't. I don't know. It was a bit weird at the time because obviously it's quite a lot of money, obviously compared to now. It's sort of 
didn't really phase me really. I just I didn't really look at the price tag thinking, wow, it's a lot of money, I've got a lot of pressure. I just thought, you know, West Brom, like, wow, what an opportunity. I just, you know, they had some great players. I remember they had um, Curtis Davis, obviously, <coughs> moved from Luton, um, that was in the same youth team, to West Brom. Um, he was there, so I spoke to him. He just obviously sold the club to me. Um, I remember they had Jonathan Green in, Kevin Phillips, uh, Zoltan Guerra, uh, John Hartson. And I just thought, wow, I'm in the changing room with them and sitting next to like, Paul Robinson. That's obviously went on to play like numerous games for, for West Brom and we ended up winning the league in the first first season. I thought, wow, is this all I've got to do to win a league? And won that, went up to the Premier League and you know, then I played against some unbelievable players in my, in my second year. Um, and just, I don't know, I think I learned a lot being there. Obviously played against some unbelievable players, played with some great players. Manager was great, Tony, Tony, Tony Mowbray was there. Um, yeah, really, and just learned a lot. And a few more clubs in between that before coming to Northampton South. Yeah. Unfortunately, obviously been cut short, but have you enjoyed your time here? No, I love my, love my time. Um, <clears throat> meeting players, you know, playing, playing with them every day. I think that's just a joy to play football. Um, I believe it's one. Of, well, I believe it is the best job in the world. I mean, you go out, you turn up, you go out there, you know, have a kick about with your mates, take it serious when the manager's talking to you, um, and then you know, go in, have lunch, have a bit of fun, and then obviously you've got a gym session. So, for any person that's obviously looking to do it, especially youngsters, I think, you know, if you're going to go for it, you've got to be committed and work hard, listen to every every bit of kind of knowledge that you're given to, and. Yeah, work hard and, and, and go for it, really. Yeah, and you'll be staying around the squad trying to offer on some expertise. Is that something you're looking forward to? Yeah, well, I spoke to the obviously manager and the chairman knew obviously what the situation was. And, you know, they said, obviously, probably you are the most experienced player in the, in the squad. Obviously, you've played in the Premier League and Europa League and Community Shield. You, you've obviously got some experience to hand down to the players. And I thought, you're right to a certain extent. And obviously, if there is anything that I can do to help, and you know, I'm more than happy to and you know, they've kind of given me a chance to just be in and around the squad and if, you know, young Jay Williams wants me to help him or you know, Cameron Williams or anyone like that, that sort of age wants me to, you know, speak to Mo over kind of help position him and I'm more than happy to, to give him my knowledge that obviously that I had. So And whilst you've been on the sidelines we're still seeing you at the games, both phone went away. Yeah, of course. i am still a still a fan and always will be so um yeah, I'll always come to the home games. I'll have obviously my, my boys that will be watching the game, supporting. Um, yeah, we'll look out for the results when they're away and stuff. So, yeah, I think we're going to be here right to the end. So.